I do that, our message for this year is, what's the message? God who reveals himself. I want to bring one particular uh, key text today that should remain as we go through different you know, aspect of this message. And that is found in Galatians 1, 15. Galatians 1, 15 and 16. I want you to understand, just get this into your heart. Galatians 1, 15. But when he had set me apart before I was born and who called me by his grace, why? Was pleased to reveal his son to me. Why did God choose you? Why were we chosen before you were born? Why the pre, you know, destination or election of God on your life? Just for this one purpose, that he might reveal his son in you. That he might reveal his son to me. That's God's greatest desire. And if that happens, contingent on that, what comes out of it? In order that I might preach him. So preaching must always precede Come on. Or preaching must be preceded by a revelation. Amen. You cannot be a preacher without a revelation. Some people think preaching is getting some information from some text or some universities. Information is not what qualifies you to preach Christ. It's revelation. So I want you to get this into your heart. Keep this at the back of your mind. Wherever you are, whenever you get a chance to minister to Christ, this is the way it happens. Look at the order. God chose you by his grace. You did nothing. Even before you were born, that means you had no involvement in it. It was a sovereign election of God. And then why did he do that? Just because to reveal his son to you and so that you can preach him. I want a church to get this. We will know God and we will preach him. Amen. The God who reveals to us is a God that we will preach. So how many of you want to have a ministry based on revelation? Amen. Can I get a witness here? Amen. Ministry based on revelation, say an amen in the house of the Lord. This is one particular passage. Let me go further. Let me go further. Today, my theme is very, very special. It might go for more than a week. This is my theme for this afternoon. Get this into your heart. This is a theme. Can we have the theme, please? For this afternoon. God revealed through his name. Somebody who's happy, say amen. amen. If I were to embark on this in a conventional manner... I can be talking about it for weeks, which I've done in the past, taking each name of God, the compound names of God, and speaking about the context in which the name was given, how that name became a revelation for the entirety of the nation of Israel and to people of God through generations. But that's not what I want to do. That could be your homework. What I want to do today, I want to bring some very, very deep understanding of what it means. So I want to give you an overview and then you can work your way through various understanding of this theme. Is that okay? In a week or two, we will be able to get an understanding of what it is. So listen carefully. What does it mean to know God through his name? I want to bring a passage which has baffled many, many scholars. It baffles even us when we read that. Can I come to that, please? It's found in Exodus. Exodus. Chapter number 6. Exodus chapter number 6. I want you to get there, please. Exodus 6. Those of you watching, I'm going systematically for the next 10, 15 minutes. We're going to learn something, and then we will go to the application. Exodus chapter number 6. And... Okay. Let's read. I have not, you know, I have not revealed myself to them as Jehovah. Where do you find that? Exodus 3 and verse number 2 and 3. God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. 
El Shaddai, or Sadai in Hebrew. But by my name, the Lord, which is Jehovah, if you look at the word cap, L-O-R-D, it's the word Jehovah, which the Jewish people will never mention. The only time somebody will mention the word fully, Jehovah, is the high priest on the Day of Atonement, once in a year. When scribes used to come to the word Jehovah, they will stop there, they will go take a shower, and change their clothes, come back and change the pen that which they are writing, and write the word J Yahweh, which is a tetragrammaton, which is, you know, Y-H-V-H. They won't even f use the full name. For us English-speaking people, anytime you see the word L-O-R-D in full, Adonai, Jehovah is the word. So let's give it, but by my name, Jehovah, I did not make myself known to them. Now, that is very, very interesting. Because I have been spending some time, I left no stone unturned. I went through to figure out what is really meant here. You know, why the complication? Let me give you why it is kind of complicated. Or it doesn't sound as simple as it sounds. I'll tell you why. Because the word, the way you see it, it says that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob knew God as El Shaddai, not as Jehovah. But that's not true. At least if you study. I went today and counted the number of times the word Jehovah is used in the book of Genesis in the story of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We have almost 200 times. 200 times. And how do you say that they didn't know me by Jehovah when you have got it 200 times? Doesn't make sense. It starts, you know, of course, the first chapter of Genesis, we, we see Elohim, the great creator, mentioned 31 times. But when we enter Genesis 2, from Genesis 2, verse number 4, it's Jehovah, Elohim. So to say that they didn't know God as Jehovah doesn't make sense. I counted today almost 200 times. Then why this word? Why did God say they didn't know me by my name, Jehovah? And secondly, I want you to understand. So, you know, there's a way that the, the, the people, the subject to whom God is now relating himself may not have known. They might have been oblivious to it. For example, God says, Jehovah appeared to Abraham. So Abraham doesn't need to know. So I wondered, is that the case? No. Abraham addressed God as Jehovah. So he even said Jehovah Jireh. You know, Isaac addressed him as Jehovah. Why? Cain addressed him. You know, Eliezer addressed him. Laban addressed him as Jehovah. Almost all people, every chapter, people address God as Jehovah. But still God tells Moses that they didn't know me as Jehovah. Now, how do you reconcile this gaping kind of a difference? How do you reconcile it? Now, if you can get this truth into your heart, this will take over our journey. It'll be a new journey for our church. It'll be a new journey for each one of us. We are going to know him through his name. Are you ready? So El Shaddai, El Shaddai is not used many times. So what could be, what is God speaking? What are we meant or, or demanded of us to read between the line? Is any message that is found here? It's very obvious, it seems, that they knew God by the name El Shaddai, the God who is you know, able to provide for them, the overpowering one, the sufficient one. You know, there's another way we look at El Sadai. El is God. Sadai means mountain. God of the mountain. You know, God, Shaddai, is also motherly, meaning the many-breasted one, 
the one who nourishes. So there are many, many kind of uh, correlation to this particular word El Shaddai. And Abraham knew God by that name. Isaac knew God by that name. Jacob knew God by that name. But Jehovah, God says there's a new dispensation happening. And I am that I am. I'm about to reveal myself and they're going to know me as Jehovah. But the fathers have not known me by Jehovah. So I started to wonder why if this name has been used so many times and people have even used this in, in relation to God, in addressing God, why did God say they didn't know me? That means it is possible for us to not know God when we think we know him. It is possible for us to not know him when we think we know him. So there are, let me give you two particular thoughts. Now, first of all, I want to keep the scope very limited to one particular area of reference. I don't want to go spread out because we don't have time for it and it's not needed for this moment. I'll keep the scope very limited. What am I trying to say? When you look at the word El Shaddai, what is the context of El Shaddai? God who gave a promise to Abraham and Abraham is now beyond the natural ability of receiving that promise, 99 years old, Genesis 17, 1, God comes and says, I am El Shaddai, meaning what you think it's not possible, El Shaddai can do it. I am the God Almighty. Oh, come on. Is anybody that believes your God is Almighty? Now, you didn't hear me. I'm, I'm going to ask a question once again. Do you believe in places of difficulty and impossibility, your God is El Shaddai, Almighty God? True. But then, in this particular you know, scenario where God comes to Moses, again, Jehovah is in the context of promise. Now, that makes the task easier. The scope is now very limited, narrow. In both cases, El Shaddai and Jehovah is in the context of promise. So now that's going to make it a little more easier for us. Now this is how I started. I started the journey three, four days back. So I got to that place. Now can we escalate this tension once again? Come on, I think my church is ready for that. I'm going to escalate this problem even more. How many of you believe promises? No, you didn't hear me. How many of you are happy for God's promises? Whether it's El Shaddai or Jehovah, it's in the context of promise. I won't declare God, El Shaddai, is a promise-keeping God. Jehovah is a promise-keeping God. If you believe that, shout a hallelujah in the house. But, but promise, it's becoming even more complicated. I'll give you two passages. First of all, I want you to read Hebrews 11.39. Hebrews 11.39. Now, I want to make it even more tougher. And all these faith heroes, though commended through their faith, they were exemplary faith people, did not receive what was promised. So you can have faith and not receive promise. And God says, that's not bad, it's good. Now, I see frown on many people's face. Pastor, we are living on a promise. So it says they did not receive the promise even though they were exemplary and God had obtained a beautiful report of faith. But let's read 33. I want to make it even more difficult. 33. 1133, please. Who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promise. In other words, there, no problem. It says they got the fulfillment of promises. How can one pastor say they did not get the promise fulfilled, and another pastor says they got their promise fulfilled through faith? Can you come next week? Now, this is the tension. So I'm bringing two tensions here. One, El Shaddai and Jehovah, and two, on the very thought of promises. Why do I connect? Because I'm keeping the scope of that name of God within the context of promises. Now, can I speak to you? 
Are you happy? I'm going to give you a bullet point in a few lines or few general guidelines on promises. Why I do that? Because I cannot preach on it. I can take each point and preach for one session, but I'm going to give you the bullet point. Are you ready? If you have got doubt, you can take it, you can go back, write it down, and then do your homework, and if you have got more doubt, come back to me. I was able to spend some time on a, on a theological study material called Theology of the Old Testament, written by Walter Brueger Mann. You know, very, very, it's not meant for laymen, it's for the high class. But I was able to spend some time in that. Now, I wanted to get this, some of the thoughts that I'm going to bring before you regarding promise. How many of you believe God is a promise-giving God? Amen. Now, you have got some promises? Are you living on? Yes. Which area do you come into? The ones that say through faith they did not obtain promise? Not or through faith they obtained promises? Okay. She looks good when she said that. Now, look at this. These are some of the thoughts I want to leave before you. Please get this into your heart. Let the Holy Spirit write in your heart. The distinguishing mark of Yahweh. Let me say that again. The distinguishing mark of Yahweh. What makes Yahweh special is the utterances of promises. You don't have promise, you don't have Yahweh. A promise produce a, produces a narrative, meaning a story. If there was no promise, there will be no Bible. There will be no biblical characters. For instance, take the story of Abraham and Sarah. There's no promise, there's no story. So a promise produces a story. A narrative which is formed of a hopeless circumstance. Why this story is exciting? Because most of the time when the promise is given, it's in a hopeless circumstance. And what was the hopeless circumstance with Abraham and Sarah? Barren and dead body. And that circumstance is overcome by the reliability of Yahweh. So when the circumstance looks impossible, God comes and says, is anything too hard for me? And then the narrative continues through generation. I was so blessed. I was listening to the worship team singing today and the word generation to generation was kept on spoken today on the platform. That means when God gives you a promise, you are walking a journey, a story starts, and it goes from generation to generation. What God spoke to Abraham, he comes to Isaac and repeats it. And then he comes to Jacob and repeats it. Let me tell you, if God gives a promise, it goes from generation <laughs> to generation. Number f Okay, I don't have numbers here. The next generation becomes a testament to the power that birthed it in the first place. Meaning, you cannot have the second generation if God had not shown his power to the first generation. There is an Isaac getting the promise because God did a miracle for Abraham. Let me tell you, when you are passing on the promise of God, you're not just passing on the promise, you're also passing on the, the testimony that God's power has made this possible. Come on, you can't have a next generation if you don't have the power of God. Can I get a shout of hallelujah in the house? Somebody help me here. Say preach. Now look at the, this line that I want to bring before you. If anybody believes that, promise can be called a circumstance-defying power. Oh, what is promise? Promise can be called a circumstance-defying power, meaning there's a circumstance that says it won't move, it is impossible, but the promise of God will come through and defy that circumstance. If you believe God's promise has a power to change circumstance, can you shout a hallelujah in the house? Now, can I go ahead? It is this oath and promise of God that gave Israel the power to survive and prosper through deb debilitating circumstances. 
When Israel went through debilitating circumstances, it was the promise of God that made them survive and prosper. I was reading the history of Israel through the time of exile, through time where they were captive. They'll go back and repeat God's promise. What made Israel a nation that came to being in our time? They always believe that God will bring them back. God's promise will not change. Next year in Jerusalem, let me tell you, people of God, is there a church that believes God's promises? He's the one that keeps you alive and helps you to prosper in the midst of difficult circumstances. If you believe that, can you say yes? And then what happens? Two things happen to promise. Now here is a place we get to understand Hebrews. Two things happen to a promise. Now listen closely. Number one, the fulfillment of a promise. Now, how many of you can imagine a promise getting fulfilled and show an expression, what will be your response when the promise gets fulfilled? Ah, you could do better, come on. By faith, they obtain the fulfillment of promise. Now, that's not bad. Somebody who can say by faith, I'm going to obtain the fulfillment of promise, can you make a noise in the house of the Lord? Yes. That's good, that's good. Now we are helping me thoroughly. Now, the fulfillment of a promise, and where do you find that? Joshua 21, 43 to 45, where God says, every good word that God had spoken, all of them came to pass, were fulfilled. Now, that's the first part. But this is the second part people don't understand. But this is part of the journey. Second, Israel waits and hopes in joy, in perplexity, in eager longing, but also in wonderment and near despair. Anybody has felt that? Joy, excitement, but despair? Come on. Sometimes wonder. Sometimes confusion. So what that makes Israel, that makes Israel a people of hope. So waiting for a promise is necessary. In that waiting, you're longing. And one of the words that we need to know for waiting is kava. Yeah. Kava is a Hebrew word where we find that word when it says, those who wait upon the Lord. It's not an ordinary word. It's not just somebody waiting, longing. Of course, that's a real obvious meaning, but there's another meaning for that. Kava means, you know, you take strands of thread and you twist and turn it and turn it and make it a rope. It is taking a strand and twisting it and turning it into a rope. And that's the reason the Bible says, while you're waiting, you're increasing your strength. Your strength is coming strong. So some of you are waiting for your promise. That's God's design. Before you get the fulfillment of your promise, you're waiting in anxiety and despair, but sometimes excitement, joy. Come on, hallelujah. Is anybody who knows what waiting for a promise is? Give a Lord a praise in the house of a Lord. The Bible says about the people, the patriarchs, it says, even though they did not get the fulfillment of the promise, they saluted, they embraced the promise. They were excited. Excited, they were joyful about the promise. Let me tell you, I need to see a church. They are saying, while we are waiting, we are not growing thin. We are getting stronger. We are not going down. We are going higher and higher like an eagle. Let me tell you, our strength is joining the strength of God himself. And before you know, we become one rope, one strand of rope. It's not just a rope of our strength, but a rope that is mixed with the power of God. And before you you know during this time of waiting we are rising up like an eagle in the house of a Lord somebody say yes oh come on hallelujah do not give a cold response to promise while you're waiting that is absolutely a crime because God's promise is precious so you've got fulfillment and waiting. Who? On the platform of previous promises made, God adds new one. Yes, yes, yes. This is a journey of a promise. So let's say when God gave promise to Abraham, there was no talk about Davidic dynasty. 
but Davidic dynasty was given. Then Jerusalem was given. Come on. The millennial reign was given. Messiah coming was given. So God keeps on adding. But let me tell you, it's a journey. That means you cannot drop it. On the base of that, God keeps on adding. How many of you want to travel with God as a promise keeping? Now, can I ask it once again? Your journey with a God-given promise is a journey with God himself. So you got all this if you want to know more. So it goes from generation to generation. Now let's come back. So this is how promise works. There's a time of waiting. And some promises God will give you. Let me tell you, I would be receiving promise even when I'm 90 years old. But it will be for the next generation. Because promise goes from generation to generation. Are you ready to receive promises from God. Do not treat it lightly. It belongs to God. If anybody believes that, only people are blessed because God is Yahweh, El Shaddai, the promise giving God. Give him a praise in the house. Now let's go deeper. What is this issue with so this is my research. I went, I, as I said, I did not leave any stone unturned. I went and dig myself, find, trying to find out what is happening. Now, let's go back to Genesis, um, Exodus 6.2. Exodus 6.2. Or oh, some of you get ready. The next 15, 20 minutes is going to be powerful. Now we come to the application. God spoke to Moses and said, I am the Lord, Jehovah. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty, El Sadai. But by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. Now, I didn't know what to make of it. But then the Lord started to, you know, minister to my heart. He said, look at the word, appeared and known. With El Shaddai, it is God appearing. You can see him. But with Jehovah, you have to know him. I can see Pastor Marcelo, but Beth knows Pastor Marcelo. That's the difference. You know, many a times, El Shaddai means you have a need, God appears. And that's the reason Abraham said, on the mountain of God, it shall be seen. It's God appearing, and many of you have experienced God appearing at a time of your need. But get ready, you're going to go to the next level. He's not just a God appearing, he's a God that you will know. Now I'll give you, I didn't know how to put this into an example, because none of the example made sense. I tried and I tried, then there'll be a theological problem with the example, and finally I came to this one, I, can, I think I can give it to you. You know, I go to a good restaurant, and the man brings me, you know, a butter chicken. And the butter chicken was so excellent, I asked, who is the chef? So they said, this is a man. I go, and maybe the man came out. I shook my hand, and I say, wow, I've never eaten such an excellent butter chicken. Congratulations. He says, thank you. And I leave home. The next Sunday, I go back for the butter chicken. So this time he brings me another item from the Italian cuisine. I say, wow, you know how to make even Italian. He says, I was a few years in Ita Italy, I know. And the next week I go, he brings me Chinese. And, and every time I eat the food, through the food I am learning something about the chef. But in my house, I know the chef. Come on. It is not the food that she made made me know her. The food, of course, that adds to it. But the, the, the essential value of my knowledge of her is not the food. The food is a component that added to it. But the first thing is I know her. 
Come on. And then I begin to know what she makes. You know, after a few months of the marriage, I said, wow, you know to make, you need to, need to, you need to make this? Wow, I didn't know that. So every time I'm discovering something, but the essential fact is not what she made that makes her know her. It's what I know her now being added with what she makes. Let me tell you, a child of God can know God through a miracle. But when you really start knowing God, Let me tell you something, even when your miracle has not happened, because you know God, you can shout a hallelujah, you can say praise the Lord, can somebody give a Lord an amen in the house of the Lord, but every time he does a miracle, every time he fulfills a promise, there's an added value to the knowledge that you know about him, can I get an amen in the house of the Lord? Oh, one day I came to realize he is a God who can heal cancer. Wow. The next Sunday I came to know he can remove tumors. Oh, and I came to realize he can raise the dead body. But let me tell you, people of God, it's added knowledge. But that's not what made me know him. I know him. I know him. He's God. Jehovah to me. Can I get somebody to believe what I'm trying to say? Now, can I go deeper? Now, I wanted to know, you know, this is something that I can talk in a marriage counseling session or something like that. You know, recently I made a study on the word yada, which is a word for no in the Bible. And, and for this audience, I'll just keep it general. Okay, the word yada has got two meanings. And every time that word is used, that meaning cannot be removed. One, particularly in a relationship, one, it is intimacy. Everybody say intimacy. Adam knew his wife, intimacy. But every time the word yada is used, it's within the context of a covenant. So what is the opposite of yada? There's another word which talks about somebody entering into a relationship, a man and a wife, intimate relationship. The word is sahaf. It's not yada. That means I'm having intimacy with this girl, but not within a covenant. And every time in the Bible, when a wrongful relationship happened, whether it's Lot, whether it's David with Bathsheba, whether it is in the book of Leviticus, whether it is, you know, you know what do you call Hagar or whatever it is, when it's wrongful, the word is not yada. It is sahaf, meaning they have got intimacy but no covenant. But here God is saying, my people will know me. That means on two count, it will be intimate and covenant. It's not just a miracle, but you will know him. How many of you want to say, this year, I want to know him? If you believe that, make a sound in the house of the Lord. God, I don't want to have just an intimacy without covenant. I want to know you within a covenant. That means every time I move, it's not I'm moving with the promise. I'm moving with the God who made the promise. God will never change his covenant. Can somebody who knows Jehovah will not change? Can I get a shout of hallelujah in the house of the Lord? He's an unchanging God. In the book of Malachi, it says, I, Jehovah, do not change. Let me tell you this year, you're going to know that this God will keep his covenant. Let me tell you, mountains can change. The whole world can change. But my God will keep his covenant. He is an unchanging God. If you believe that, shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord. Somebody say yes. Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. Can I say something that's going to... Can I ask you to release something in the atmosphere when I say this? Are you ready? So I put in... There are hundreds of words on Jehovah. But I want to bring a few passages. Are you ready? Let's go quickly. 
So I said to God, 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 even in Exodus, when you said, I'm going to reveal myself, I'm going to show myself, Jehovah, it's through your work. I'll prove to you. Exodus, uh, Exodus 6, 7, 5. Can you read? The Egyptians shall know that I'm the Lord when I stretch my hand. It's through a work. 717. 717. It's all through work. By this you shall know that I'm the Lord. Behold, with the staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water. Something has happened. 810. Tomorrow I will do something according to the word, and you shall know. 822. Swarms of flies. So you look at every instance, God is known through his acts. So that God be confused. I said, God, I put all this example of the chef first, not the food. God is so kind. He said, son, in my spirit, the first time I reveal myself as Jehovah, look what I told my people. It's found in Exodus 6, 7. Before the miracle happened, this is what I'm going to do. I will take you to be my people. I will be your God. And you shall know, I am Jehovah. That means just you being my people, me walking beside you, you will know, I am Jehovah. Before the miracle happens, before a healing happens, you will know that I am Jehovah. Anybody who can say that, if you want to know Jehovah because he's your God and you are his son and daughter, can you make a sound of joy in the house of the Lord? You shall know that I am Jehovah, just not because of the miracle, but because of my intimacy. Let me conclude here with a revelation that God put on my heart. A mighty revelation. Can I do that? Are you happy? Is this something that is blessing your heart? So I thought, is there a way I can find not a contrast? Because Jehovah is the Almighty. You can't separate it. It's illogical and theologically a murder if I separate Jehovah and El Shaddai. Because it's Jehovah El Shaddai. But I thought, Lord, can I at least see a transition where people moved away from, or moved from Jehovah El Shaddai to Jehovah? You know, can I say this to you? It's a beautiful theology. Every name of God in the Bible is derived from his acts. Every name of God in the Bible is derived from what he did. Except for one. That's Jehovah. It's not act. He is. I am. Somebody say yes. It's like... If I teach, you call me a teacher. And you can know me as a teacher. When I preach, you call me a preacher. You call me, you know me by, as a preacher. If I do plumbing, which I've not done, you call me a plumber. But when you know me as Anison, not because of what I did, who I am. And God says, it's not El Shaddai, son. It's Jehovah. I am the one that you can know as a person. Full, everything put together. I am that. Jehovah. So I wanted to see if there's a transition from El Shaddai to Jehovah. And I looked into, I even wanted to buy books if there is that theology. But nobody has written about it. And this is special, what I'm about to release. Are you ready? For those of you watching me. The first time God says El Shaddai is to Abraham. Can I read that please? Let's look at El Shaddai to Abraham. It is found 
in Genesis 17, 1. And when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am El Shaddai. <laughs> but no revelation of God remains with you. It moves to the next generation. So Genesis 28.3. Please read Genesis 28.3. Who is saying this? Enough. Genesis 28.3. God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful. Now it is Isaac giving that blessing to Jacob. But one character in the Bible who cannot be separated, who became the embodiment of El Shaddai's revelation. If you take that name El Shaddai and put it on one person in the Bible, this will be the man. And that is Jacob. So what happens with Jacob? Jacob's whole life is about El Shaddai. Genesis 35, 11. So his father blesses him with Almighty, El Shaddai, and God said to Jacob, I am God Almighty. The revelation is now repeated. Can you read Genesis 43, 14? May God Almighty grant you mercy. Now, when they came for Benjamin, father's heart was completely broken. But again, he uses the word Almighty. Because that name is what kept him from the beginning. So when there's a crisis, you'll go back to that name, God Almighty. Can I read one more? So when Jacob comes to the end of his life, the summary of his life story is put with this word. Can you read Genesis 43, 48, 3? Genesis 48, 3. Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me. This is my story. El Shaddai. Some of you can say 2022 you have entered because it's been God Almighty. He protected you, preserved you, gave you clothes, to care of your need is the all-sufficient one. But get ready. You're moving to another level of walking with Jehovah. Are you with me? So even when he's blessing Joseph, that's the name, El Shaddai. But let me give you one more. When he blessed Joseph, here is what he says, 49.25. So the whole life... It is about El Shaddai, by the God of your father, who will help you by the El Shaddai. So his whole life is wrapped with this knowledge of God as El Shaddai. Now listen closely. Listen closely. I found something very interesting. I said this word... The, the, the book of Genesis inundated with the word Jehovah. But then I saw a gap. A gap. Of almost 14, 15 chapters where nobody refers to him as Jehovah. The last reference is found in Genesis 32.9. Somebody called him Jehovah. For almost 18 chapters, no more Jehovah. Nobody calls him Jehovah. Yes, it says God, Jehovah was with Joseph, but Joseph never called him Jehovah. Why this gap? 18 chapters. And please look at me. Here is a man who gets the revelation of Almighty. And the other thing I found interesting, God blessed Abraham, God blessed Jake, Isaac, God blessed Jacob, but God never blessed Joseph. He had a dream, but never God came and blessed him. I said, that's not... And, and, and you know what Jacob says? The blessings that my father's got was inferior to your blessing, Joseph. That means this man whom God did not bless has a bigger blessing. Oh, some of you. My job is to make you tense. 
Here is a man where there's a gap of 18 chapters where no Jeho is mentioned. And there's a man who's got a blessing, not through God. Who blessed? And that blessing became the most powerful blessing, more than Isaac. Why? And there in Genesis 48, you find the story. The man who received the fullness of the almighty revelation is now appointed to pass it on. God will make you go through a revelation and pack you with that revelation. Next time God doesn't have to come, you can pass it. This is what revelation does. This is a reason why ministry must be based on revelation. So God gave that to Abraham. Abraham passes it on to, or God gave it to Jacob, Isaac. But when it came to Jacob, it is now packed. Every word that he says is almighty. Every story begins with almighty. Every scene is almighty. And he says, now I've come to a place. I can release that to somebody. I'm here to say, the way God led you, today you are sure about who your God is. In the days to come, you can pass it on. And I'm here to say, some of you are going to pass on the revelation. He's Jehovah Jireh. Some of you are going to pass on the revelation. He's my healer. Some of you are going to pass on the revelation. He is my protector. Can somebody who believes that put your hands together, give a Lord a praise in the house of a Lord. God says, I don't have to do it. You have become the emissary. You have become the reflection. You have become the representation of that revelation. Now you touch. You release it on Joseph and upon your grandchildren. Oh, Rabbi Shanda Radha Sekelas. Can I hear somebody in this place? God made you go through situation so that you can have one revelation of God that you can pass on to the next generation. Can somebody say yes in the house? Oh, what a God, what a God, what a God. What a God we serve. This is not found in any theological book. It was a revelation that God gave me. And yesterday night, I had to send a text message to somebody and say, I need God to surround me because I'm almost exploding. The Lord told me this. With Abraham, I had to give him directly. With Isaac, I had to give him directly. With Jacob, I had to give him directly. But Jacob's life became a story. And now he has become the embodiment of the almighty revelation. And God said, I'm not anointing him just to give it to his son. But no other fathers had this privilege to give to the grandsons. Your knowledge through your experience, who God is, He's going to bless your grandchildren. He's going to bless the generations. If you can believe that, can somebody make a sound in the house of the Lord? You are passing it all. To me, it's not about the miracle. I want to know Him. If I know the chef, you know, it's a feeding that matters, not just the food. There's so much that happens with the food. Sometimes the chef can say, I don't want to give this to you enough. Because she wants to preserve me. So when you know the chef, the food is not the issue. He will do the best for you. But I'm releasing this blessing on somebody whom you touch, whom you pray, whom you lay hand, 
will get the transference of the revelation that God gave you if you believe that if somebody wants anointing make a sound in the house of a Lord it will be a trans oh come on you can do better I think I don't know if I could say it boldly one of the areas that I've experienced the maximum is travel Travel to the extent I know if somebody travels with me, they will also walk in it. You know, because of 10, 15 years, I have seen extraordinary things happen. Things that you can't even explain can happen in a travel. And now I know people traveling with me, they get to walk in it. If that's one favor, imagine hundreds. You know what Jacob says? He says, you know, it's so beautiful when you read that. I never found that. I thought he was blessing his grandchildren. No. Sandwich between the blessings of the grandchildren, we find he blessed Joseph. And then he said to Joseph, bless your kids. He said that. And put my name on them. If you have El Shaddai and a knowledge of God, you can have your name with the name of God passed on to the next generation. Today, on the count of three, by faith, I'm releasing one, two, three, a generation who knows their God, but can pass it on to the next generation. Can somebody who believes that? Come on. Do you want to give your God to your next generation. Make a sound in the house of the Lord. A people that have not known God will know who God is. And God says, that's the reason I want you to know me. You knew me as El Shaddai. But when the promise is not fulfilled, you have a journey, you need Jehovah. He's walking beside you. He's a heavenly God. He's a personal friend of yours. Can you receive him? But I'm going to give a revelation that I believe the enemy in hell is going to be stupefied and absolutely pulverized, pulverized by this revelation. It has been released to the kingdom of God. 18 chapters. No mention of Jehovah. It became about El Shaddai, but it's getting transferred. I want to welcome you to that climactic moment where Jacob is now sitting on his bed and determining the destiny of his children even to the unseen future some people call it a prophetic song there was no delay or disruption Reuben comes he gets his word Simeon comes he gets his word Levi comes he gets his word he doesn't even have to wait it's flowing out of his mouth like the chorus memorized for generations. Not a word to be edited. Not a word to be displaced. It is flowing like a song with a melodious harmony. While he's prophesying over one, two, three, four, five, six, all of a sudden, Jacob breaks into, or the contemporary language, gate crashes his own prophetic flow. Scholars have been baffled. Why did he even do that? For a moment, he is now in a flow of releasing the destiny of tribes and nations through them. But all of a sudden, abruptly, 
without any pre-calculation, here comes a break-in to that flow. And there you see El Shaddai meeting Jehovah after 18 chapters. <sighs> David, come here to a friend. Leisha, do you want to join your friend on the platform? Okay, if you're okay, it's okay. This is the thrust of what I'm saying. 18 chapters. Last time we saw it's 32nd chapter, but now it's 49th chapter. Nothing. And he's prophesying to Reuben, Simon, Levi, Judah, everybody. And all of a sudden, 49, 17. Forty-nine, seventeen. Dan shall be a serpent in the way, a viper by the path that bites the horse's heels, so that his rider falls backward. There's so many, you know, interpretation on that. I don't want to go there. So Dan is now spoken. Immediately, he burst into. Something that is not prophetic. Next word. I wait for your salvation, Jehovah. After 18 chapters, he speaks about Jehovah. But that was an interruption, I believe, coined in the throne room of heaven. Why did I say that? Because he's giving prophecies, but he's now extending the tele lens of his camera into something even more further. Because for the first time in the Bible, you will see the word salvation. And the word there is Jeshua or Eshua. You know what is the Hebrew? I wait for you, Jesus. Oh, Jehovah. He is under a prophetic anointing, but an unction that makes him break into his own prophetic flow to speak about the Savior. And that connected to Jehovah. And Jesus said, He who has seen me, has seen my father. I am. What am I trying to say? If you are a true child of God, miracles and experience will give you an understanding of God. And I'm not against it. El Shaddai. Yes, when I was barren, El Shaddai. When Laban came against me, El Shaddai. When I needed food and clothing, El Shaddai. But if you are a true child of God, God will take that as a platform. And you will not just pass on to the next generation. God is going to give you a new revelation that will end in Jesus Christ.
Can somebody who knows the greatest revelation is Jesus Christ, can you give a Lord a praise in the house of a Lord? He is the highest. He is the most glorious revelation of God on this planet. It's called the revelation of God in the flesh called Jesus Christ. The transition is seen here between 32nd chapter and 49th chapter. Here comes the word Jehovah. That means Jacob is saying, I am dying. I will not be able to experience him like the way I want to. But another man is getting up. His name is Moses. He will come to reveal Jehovah. But I am speaking prophetically. You will know God as a person. As a friend. Today, do you want to receive this? I want to release a two blessings and I'll add one more and we'll done. Number one, the revelation of knowing him through what he has done for you. Get ready. If there's one thing you can pass on, it'll be that revelation. If anybody believes that's going to be a story, please make a sound. God says, just as I would come, you would stand in the gap. You would stand representing me and release this blessing on somebody. If anybody wants that anointing on your life, make a sound. Come on, somebody, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, give the Lord a praise in the house of the Lord. You will become, you will be able to bless somebody and say, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah El Shaddai, Jehovah Shalom. Can somebody who wants to receive this make a sound in the house of the Lord? <laughs> Jehovah Nissi, the compounded name of God, but number two, God says, through this, your eyes will go further because you're waiting to see Jesus. And Jehovah, after saying this, a few minutes later, he closed his eyes, he's done. But before he died, the last name he released for the next generation was not El Shaddai. It was Jehovah. And believe me, I'm not trying to put myself on a pedestal. There's no theological book that will give you this understanding. Three days. Went through each line. When there was no answer, I cried. And today morning, I just opened my my journal, write diary, and it says on top, just the page I opened, it's a big diary. The word is I've put there, Y W V H Yahweh. And the word Jan 9th. That means what I'm preaching today on Jan 9th was all recorded many years ago. It was meant to be. The first time I got him as Jehovah was 2000, the month of Jan. He appeared to me in a dream, in a trance, by the name Jehovah. And today I stand here to say, some of you get ready. Miracles will keep on happening, but you will know him walking beside you. And you are going to give it to people. Can I, from my heart, like an unrefined prophet of old, can I cry out as loud as I can? Is anybody who can say, the one who revealed in me, I'm going to release that, yeah. reveal him to others? Let Canada see who our God is. Let this nation see who our God is. Let the earth see who our God is. Come on, if you believe that, give a Lord a shout of praise in the house of a Lord. Let! Hallelujah. 
I'll close here. The first point, you will bless somebody. That means God doesn't have to come. You become the abusory. Now, can I see somebody with such sense of it is possible? I will become the representative of Christ because I know him. I know him. Number two, whatever blessing, I will leave something for the next generation to pursue. I wait. That's the reason it says they did not get their promise fulfilled. Because it's beyond a miracle. It is to see Jesus. But what I heard today in the context of our human needs, Jehovah has a habit of compounding himself into a name. When you need healing, he becomes Jehovah Rapha. When you need peace, he becomes Jehovah Shalom. And there was a time Israel thought God has left us. And God comes down and that's so beautiful. He says, the city shall be known. Jehovah Shama. He is here. He has not changed. He has not gone. Some of you will become Jehovah Shama. He is with me. I know his presence. But what is even though fascinating, Jehovah has got a way of mutating, please don't get me wrong, into even things that are not theologically kosher. David says, is Jehovah rock? Is Jehovah buckler? Is Jehovah belt? Is Jehovah helmet? He's Jehovah, my shoes. What does it mean? <laughs> that means, David saying, every time when I walk with him, what I need, he becomes. <laughs> know the chef. The blessing is coming. No, God, the blessing is coming. Can somebody lift up your voice and give the Lord a praise in the house of the Lord? He becomes, he becomes your bank balance. He becomes your belt. He becomes your shoes. He becomes your oil. He becomes your wine. He becomes everything that you need. He becomes your rock. He becomes your fortress. He becomes your refuge. He becomes everything. It is not Sahaf, it is Yada, knowing him. Next two minutes, pray. Lift up your voice and say, I want to know him. Yes. Few years back, one of the most powerful prophets that I've ever seen walks into a meeting that I'm preaching. He interrupts the meeting and says, Anison, write down these four things in your life. It will take place. And I want you to know, I will just say the first one. He said, you and your people will know that I am Jehovah. And I release that over my people. Come on. Hallelujah. How many of you want to know him? Pray. Next two or three minutes. You can walk and pray. Sit and pray. Just two minutes. Pray. Don't leave this meeting without spending some time in prayer. Kneel down and pray. Pray if you want to. Just pray. Say, Lord, I want to know him. From El Shaddai to Jehovah. I love you, Holy Spirit of God. I love you, Holy Spirit of God. 
you'll have something to give. Such a presence of God in this place. Promise cannot be seen in isolation. A word from God cannot be seen in isolation. It's a journey with Him. I release upon our brothers standing here, upon our sisters, you'll be able to touch somebody and release what you have known about God. Your experience will become their experience. God is going to do that. Let's pray. Lift up your voice and shout the name Jesus. Pray, pray the name of Jesus. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. I want to know him, Jehovah, 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 God Almighty. I want to know him. I want to know him. Come on, hallelujah. Yes, I will see the Red Sea divide. I will see miracles. But before that, he is my God. He is my God. I am his servant. I am his child. I am his daughter. Can somebody say yes in the house of the Lord? That's the revelation of God. Let's pray. Bettina, come. Sisters, join your hands if you can, if you want to. I know some restrictions are there, if you want to. But wherever you are, lift up your hand and give him some praise. Your promise is going to be about him. Lord, I bless your name. I bless your name. When this thought became too much over me, I remember sending one line to somebody yesterday night. Blessed be the Lord, my God. And today when I saw Bobin saying that, singing that in Jewish, Oh, my heart was so blessed. I started to smile. He's worthy of our praise. Can you give this Jehovah, the unchanging one, the one who's not created, who's outside of time, who remains with every moment he's with you, it is not he was, he is, come on. He's there right with you. The God of yesterday, he's a God of today, and he's a God of tomorrow. Can you give him a praise in the house of the Lord? Shout his name, Jesus! Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Miracles are happening in the name of Jesus. Come on, get ready. You're going to see fulfillments. Even your waiting is going to be worth it. Even your waiting, you're going to see a journey with God. Your waiting is going to make you rise up like an eagle. Can you receive it in the name of Jesus? Thank you, Lord. Father. There are many of my people watching online. I bless them right now. Thank you, Lord, for this astounding revelation from your heart. Your presence is going to come. Can I repeat what I heard the Lord say? Cloud on the outside, glory on the ends. Get ready for power manifestations where power will confront power. Power of Yahweh will confront the power of Pharaoh. And miracles are going to happen. Thank you, Lord. It's been done. In Jesus' precious name, everybody said, Amen and Amen. Can you give?